This is my vintage RCA 77DX ribbon microphone, and in this video, I'm going to tell you its story. My name is Johnny and I host a podcast and local radio show here in Houston, Texas called Geek Therapy Radio and I am the YouTube channel manager for the Houston Museum of Natural Science. This voiceover is recorded entirely with this very RCA 77DX. I have treated the audio to sound its best, but more about that in a few minutes. The RCA Type 77D ribbon microphone was introduced in 1948, and this Type 77DX debuted six years later in 1954. My grandfather worked for RCA at the time and brought this one home. I'm not clear whether it was a corporate gift or if he bought it himself, but I can tell you that to my knowledge, this microphone has survived 67 years unmodified and without repair. On the bottom of the 77DX, you'll find the various settings for the low frequency roll off. M stands for music and bypasses any filter to allow for full range pickup. You know, to capture the kick drums lows and the string sections highs of the big band era and beyond. V1 and V2 are intended for close up vocals. V1 rolling off around 250 hertz and V2 rolling off higher around 400 hertz. Both ranges depending a bit on selected pickup pattern, which we'll get to shortly. So 250 hertz and 400 hertz is quite high roll off by modern standards, and I suspect this was due to broadcast and reproduction limitations of the era. Remember, FM radio and hi-fi were still a long ways off. That's why I personally leave my 77DX in the M position to minimize low end losses. Like a lot of ribbon microphones, I'll take all the range it will give me, then EQ later. Moving to the back of the iconic grille, we see the polar pattern selector. U for unidirectional, aka cardioid, N for non-directional, aka omnidirectional, and B for bidirectional, aka, well, bidirectional. Okay, figure eight to get pedantic. One of the most fascinating things about the 77DX is that the selectable polar patterns are altered mechanically by a metal shutter that rotates with the selector to allow for different pickup patterns. Currently, I personally keep this at N or non-directional. I find that at least on my personal 7070X, this offers the best frequency response to EQ later. I just have to be mindful of room noise around me and behind the mic. Before getting into my family history with this microphone, we'll of course do some audio samples. Right now, you're listening to its output treated by EQing and compression. Let's remove the flattery and roll through the raw audio of different polar patterns and high pass filters. So now you're hearing the naked raw audio coming straight out of the microphone. Right now, without changing anything, you're listening to the non-directional N pattern and the M frequency selection. So no roll off, just the omnidirectional butt naked ribbon. Please don't hit me algorithm. Now I will select V1 to hear the low end roll off in this omnidirectional position. This is what it sounds like non-directional with V1 roll off. Now I will select V2 roll off. This is what it sounds like omnidirectional with V2 roll off selected. Now in the interest of reducing wear and tear on this 67 year old heirloom, I'll leave it at the V2 roll off and switch the pickup pattern to U or unidirectional cardioid. This is what it sounds like cardioid with V2 roll off. Now this is what it sounds like unidirectional cardioid at V1. Check one two, check one two. And this is what it sounds like unidirectional cardioid in the M position. So full frequency response with no roll off. Now we'll switch to bi-directional with no roll off. Yeah. 
This is what it sounds like bi-directional with no low-end roll-off. Now this is what it sounds like bi-directional in the V1 position. Check one, two, check one, two, sibilance, sibilance. And this is what it sounds like bi-directional in the V2 position. Check one, two, check one, two, three, sibilance, sibilance. Now I will go back to the non-directional N pattern and back to the M position for full range frequency response. So now I'm in the non-directional N pattern and back to the M position. So let me bring back my EQing and compression. So now let's quickly discuss ribbon mic theory and technique. Again, this is just a crash course. This is by no means the end all be all. There's no such thing. To start this section bluntly, 99% of people watching this should stay away from a ribbon mic. Not because you're not skilled, but because ribbon mics can be a nightmare on most sources with most budget audio equipment. In brief, as you've just heard, they need more gain than a lot of audio interfaces can quietly provide, and then they'll still typically need a lot of EQ tweaking. If you want an easy workhorse for live streaming gameplay and podcasting, a ribbon mic is not it. Stick with a good condenser or dynamic mic. Then again, if you're willing to put in the extra effort and cost to get a decent modern sound out of one, go for it. Ribbon mics work best to naturally tame loud sources with harsh upper mid-range and high end. So think saxophones, orchestral string sections, drum overheads, and distorted guitar cabinets to name a few. Even nasally singers. I mentioned that they'll almost always need EQing, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Ribbons typically take massive EQ tweaks like a champ. Don't be afraid to boost and reduce two or three times as aggressively as you would with a condenser. The ribbon mic isn't broken, that's just literally what it takes to get the sound you want. That's also why you want a good mic pre and or an inline gain booster. Without either of those things, you'll be EQing a source that had the gain set to maximum. In other words, you'll be boosting a noisy preamp's noise. I'll start closing this video with a brief family history of this 77DX. Like I mentioned earlier, my grandfather brought it home brand new from RCA when he worked for them in the 1950s. Then when my father got home from Vietnam and got his degree in journalism, he used it in his early radio career, as well as in our family-owned radio station in the early 1980s, KBRN in San Antonio, Texas, back in the day. When my dad transitioned to television, the 7070X basically went into storage, I think. After he died in 2013, my uncle, also a working broadcaster and voiceover actor, used it for a few more years in his work. I earned my own radio show on KPRC 950 AM in Houston in spring of 2017, and a few months ago my uncle sent our family RCA 7070X to me to pass the radio torch. The crazy thing is, to my uncle and I's knowledge, this 7070X has never been restored or modified. We both have no record of my dad or grandfather bringing it in for servicing. As far as we know, this may be an extremely rare original 77DX. I'd have to say, I can see how that kind of makes sense. She's got a few bumps and bruises from 67 years of life and fairly regular use. I guarantee you that I'm one of the few people in broadcasting, or podcasting for that matter, using a 77DX semi-regularly. How much will I use this 7070X? I don't really know. There's a lot of history behind this microphone, but I do like how the industry standard Electro Voice RE27ND sounds on my voice. Just because something is rare, expensive, and iconic does not mean it'll work for you. Heck, I like how my $100 MXL V67G sounds more than this, but we'll see. As any artist knows, it's always better to have a few brushes to choose from to serve different purposes. For now, I'm rocking the RCA 77DX, but who knows what I'll use tomorrow. I mean, the $90 Shure SM57 sounds great on darn near everything. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, I'd be honored if you'd consider liking and subscribing. Also, if you want to follow more of what I do week to week, make sure you subscribe to the Houston Museum of Natural Science YouTube channel. That is literally my day job. But until next time, take care everybody. This concludes the broadcast day. Bye.